Hello my friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful duplicate stitched Easter eggs. Now I bought the plastic eggs from um, the dollar store. Um, I used scrap pieces of acrylic, four weight acrylic yarn. I did buy, um, I saw, you don't have to, but I did see these little balls of yarn in um, Dollarama as well. They came in a package of 10, I think it was, for like um, $4 and, and I used those to do my duplicate stitching, but you can use um, whatever yarn you have at home to do the duplicate stitching, that's no problem. Okay, so um, once you get your, your supplies ready, you can use, like I said, your Addy 22 or your Center 22, get your colors of yarn that you want and a darning needle and, and uh, let's get started. You know, this is such a fun project. It doesn't take long, it looks beautiful. If you love to do adult coloring, you're gonna love this because it is so relaxing. I didn't follow any patterns to do this duplicate stitch. I just started and then I just did it as I went along. Whatever came to my mind, I did. And that's what you're gonna probably do as well. Um, I do show you each egg individually and show you how, how I've done it. Um, but use your imagination and, and uh, create on your own and, and I'm sure they're gonna be absolutely beautiful. So um, grab your supplies and let's get started. All right, so this again is a fairly simple project, doesn't take long at all, but it's so much fun. Um, so we're going to bring our last white, our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder here. We're gonna do a long tail cast on. I'm using Burnett Premium in pink. Um, you can use whatever yarn you want, okay? Um, and we're going to do a long tail cast on behind and in front, all the way around, whatever you want um, in four weight then you'll do the same amount of rows that I'm doing. If you choose a three weight yarn, you're gonna to wanna to do a couple more rows. Um, if you're choosing a bulkier yarn, then of course you're gonna do less. But um, for me, uh, for a, for this four weight yarn, I'm doing 11 rows, not counting my um, cast on rows. So you can set your counter if you like, or you can just count them out as you go. Um, generally, I just count them out as I go because it's only 11 rows, but um, I'll set my counter here for the purpose of the video. So we're gonna just turn, crank out. That's one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to stop. Okay, I clicked on six. I'm just holding it between my um, fingers just like this, okay, um, and letting it just glide through. So it's it's just a very loose tension, okay? Okay, that's six that I clicked on, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it just clicked on 11. I'm going to finish that row. I saw that black divider coming around that I marked with a permanent marker. I'm going to cut off a long tail. Okay, then I'm going to open my yarn feeder, put that tail in between the last white and the first black, making sure you close that latch or you'll nip it with your needles when you're going around. <laughs> we don't want a broken latch or a broken needle for that point, much uh, for that uh, matter. Okay, so we're gonna just crank, take off the first needle. So take your needle and put it underneath that loop. This is called a long tail cast off. Okay, and we're gonna, until we can get some slack on the side here, I'm just gonna um, turn it so I have one free at a time, okay? One free needle, like this one's not free because the needle's still holding it, okay? So I'll maybe do a couple more. Because when I do it that way, then when I'm picking this one up, if this is still tight in here, then um, it'll pull on, pull on the whole project um, when I'm taking this one off and you could drop a stitch here, okay? Because if this little loop falls off, these red teeth and falls down, then your, your row will start dropping, okay? But now that I've got some slack on it, I can do a few more. Picking them up with my thumb, just like so. Okay. Get a few on there, I'm gonna pull it through and continue around to the end. And almost lost that one, but I caught him, yay. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna take that off and um, I've got this beautiful soft pink uh, piece that's made here. I'm going to remove my machine and then I'll see you right back. All right, so I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the video that I buy these little eggs at uh, the dollar store, okay? And they come apart, um, but you just keep them closed like that. And then you're gonna take a piece of tape and you're just gonna cover that seam, okay? And that will keep it from, and you don't have to go all the way around, you can go most of the way around, but it'll keep it from popping open, okay? Once you have it covered with your, um, 
with your piece here. Uh, and if you squeeze on this and it pops open, then it, you can't, it'll be hard to get back together because your ends are all closed off on your piece here. So um, that's why I do that. Okay, now I'm going to switch my needle out here. I'm going to cut my yarn in so it's a little bit shorter. I don't need to work on it quite that long. Okay, and we're going to just reinforce the ends. Just like we always do whenever we make a tube. Okay, whenever we, when we close an end to, with a cinch, okay? So, except for, generally for my beanies and stuff, once I, once I reinforce it around here, then I tie a knot to secure it. But because this is so small and, uh, when the nature of what we're using it for, um, I, I'm not going to tie any knots. I don't want any, any bulky knots. So all I'm going to do, oops, I lost it out of my needle, is I'm going to go around the circle, um, in one direction. I'm going to go around the complete circle twice. So that was, uh, I think one, well, let's just say that that's one. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to go around one more time and it's, it's tight. And I'm going to go around one more time, that same direction. Okay. Getting underneath all that first row of stitches. Give it a little tight pull. I'm going to a little bit further here. Okay. Now I've gone around twice to reinforce that and that would be good. But now I'm going to just go back the other way. Okay. Just once. And then I know that this is not going to unravel and come, come apart. Um, even though I'm not putting a knot in it. Okay. So I'm going to complete that little circle there. Okay. Then I'm just going to put this, pop it down through the center into the inside, give it a little pull, cut that off. I'm going to then take my piece and I'm going to stretch it. I could have done this when I took it off the machine, um, but it's okay. It's a small enough piece. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, at any point before you put it on the egg. Okay, so it's nice and stretched out. Then I'm going to take my egg. I'm going to slip it in there. It doesn't matter if you put the fat end, end in or the narrow end in first. Um, just however you, you want to do it. Then I'm going to, to pull up on that other piece of yarn as I'm smoothing it out with my hands like this. Okay. And that's wonderful. You can, you can see the... Um, the colored egg through it but I like that actually because I think it gives it some dimension um, or if you if you want to do um, two or three more rows so that your knit is is nice and tight and you don't see anything then you can go ahead and do that um, but I, I like it to 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 be able to see some of the color through if I'm using a colored egg okay so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close off that top end just like um, I did with the other side and then I'll see you back all right, so I have it all tied off, and then so then what what I do is I smooth it down. I want to make sure that it's it's snug to the point there, so I just start smoothing it down, and then I do it on the other end, making sure that that little um, cent center is in the center of the egg on the bottom, and then I smush it down to the middle. So then you can just you see how that lines up your stitches beautifully. Um, so there was no need to do more more stitches than or more rows than eleven rows because once you shape it, you put it on your egg and you and you um, work the the stitches then they're perfect and they're beautiful. And uh, that's 11 rows. So I can see a hint of purple through there, but I'm going to begin my uh, duplicate stitch and I can see my stitches beautifully. So um, it'll be easy to, to apply my, my um, pattern. Now for me, <laughs> I, I just, uh, you know, it's like, you just got to get your creative on. Okay. So like for this one, oh, this one, I need to straighten out a little bit. Um, for this one, um, I just uh, did, took this, this deeper, per, um, teal and I just did a row of duplicate stitches all around. Then I went up, a, I missed a row and I did a row of pink, um, just every other stitch. And then in between those um, pink stitches, I did another row um, that's in between those two stitches. So, and then I did the same in the bottom and then, or under on, on the bottom half. And then for here, I just came up from the center and just went over, came back down into the center and came up and then back into the center and then up here and back into the center up here all around to make that design on the top and the bottom okay so you just got to be creative and and uh just feel it as you go for this one um i can i see the yellow hint underneath so i love that actually with this white um with this white uh covering over the egg and then i just took the the blue and i randomly put them everywhere you'll see they're random so there's no pattern here i just randomly put them there's some some um, spaces that are bigger than others and there's some that are closer together but I like the randomness of it actually so um, then I did the same with the bottom 
not the top, just the bottom, just to make it a little bit different. Okay, so that's another egg that I did. This is my favorite one, actually. This one I did, um, I did, I started on this gray row here, and I did two stitches beside each other. Then I dropped down and did two beside each other, one, one, uh, one stitch lower. Then the next two, I came up one stitch and did two beside each other. Then down again, did two beside each other, and I followed that pattern all the way through. And then I took my second color, and I just went... I followed that pattern just on top. Okay, so then I did um, I did uh, two teal over the two gray that are the higher row. Then I went down a stitch and did the two teal. And you, you'll see that pattern just zigzags like that with um, stitches of two. Then I just went down um, and I, um, underneath the, the taller rows, I missed two stitches. And then I did a white, okay? But I only did one because I did every other one. So underneath this row, there's none, but underneath this row, there is, okay? And then, so because this next set is um, one stitch lower, there's only one stitch in between, okay? So then I missed a row, and then there's two stitches in between the taller row, the higher row, and, and likewise. So then I missed that row, and then this next one, there's only one stitch. So, you know, no rhyme or reason. And then for this one, um, I went in the, into the center like this and came out here, brought it out, and then just went over sideways, okay? Then came back up. Um, no, that's not what I did. So I, I, I went in, came out where I started there, then I went in, and I went over to this next stitch here, okay? And then down. I mean, I could show you all of these, but this video would be forever. So um, I'm just explaining them to you and you just be creative and just went down and went sideways then came up to the top of that point and went down and likewise all the way around for that one. Okay. Then for this one, this one's very pretty too. I kind of, um, so I did, I started with the outside one. So I did um, one V stitch here. Then you'll see this is a row of three. This is the same row right here. Okay. So I, I took the middle stitch, if you want to visualize it like that, the top row here, I, I took the middle stitch and I did um, a duplicate st stitch on that. Then from this one, one right underneath it, and then that row underneath, there's also three. And I took the middle one and then these three, the middle one. So I've got um, four of on the outside and then I on the inside, I did a different color. Okay, so it kind of looks like a little bit of a flower. And then I took the, um, the bright, uh, fuchsia color and just disperse, disperse them all around. I didn't do anything to the bottom. I felt this one was just pretty just like that. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so this one, I added some straight lines. So um, basically did a, a V stitch in the middle. And then um, it goes like this. These are the V stitches. Okay. Um, in the middle. And then I just did some straight lines. And then I did a just a cross an X on the top there. Didn't do anything on the bottom. This is where my knot was, so it looks like a little point there. And that's what I did with that one. So um, for this one, all I did was take variegated yarn. I did, I did my 11 rows, and then I put it inside out so that the garter stitch side is showing, okay? And that looks really pretty. But another one that I did the garter stitch with was this one. And this is, um, I don't have the wrapper for this yarn anymore, but I think this was Karen, um, Karen cakes of some sort, okay? Um, and it's just a color changing yarn, um, but I think that looks beautiful. I love it, actually. Okay, so now that you've got your, your egg, you're going to now start your, your duplicate stitch pattern. So I take, I just grab whatever color I think. I'm looking in the bowl and I see that there's a lot of this color in there. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of fuchsia that I'm, I'm visualizing. So if I wanna make this a centerpiece or something, I'm gonna try to find something that's a little bit different. So I think I'm going to choose this lighter blue here. So like, these are so cool. From, from Dollarama and you know, or Dollar Tree, I can't remember which one now, but four bucks for all of these. And they're quite full, like there's a lot in there. So you're gonna take off, um, a strand, okay, and then I'm just gonna stick this back in here. I don't want it to unravel. And then you're gonna put it in half. You're gonna you're gonna make a double strand. Okay. Um, I just find that it looks it looks better. I did one that that was a single strand, and I didn't really. I, I I'm not digging it as much as I am the other ones. So I'm going to. I I did all the rest in a double strand. Okay, because this is pretty thin. If you're gonna use just regular four weight yarn, then you'll just need a single strand. Okay. So then. Um, for duplicate stitch, if you don't know how to do, do a duplicate stitch, you can look for a video on how to do a duplicate stitch on my um, channel, Koala Knits and Knacks. Um, 
of course. But if, uh, if you know how to do it, then you just pick a section. Like there's no rhyme or reason to it. So usually I start in the middle here somewhere, but, um, you want to make sure that you're choosing, um, you're bringing your yarn up into the section where you're going to duplicate this stitch. The wide part of the V is at the top. I'm not going to go into here where the narrow part is at the top. Okay. Um, cause when we duplicate, we duplicate up this side of the stitch, then we go under, we're under here, then we come down this side of the stitch and the point is at the bottom, okay? So I'm just going to, I don't know what pattern I'm going to do, I just randomly figure it out as I go. Um, sort of like decorating Easter eggs when you're, when you're painting them, <laughs> you just figure it out as you go, right? Um, and make a creation. So I, I'm coming up into this stitch, I'm going to duplicate this one. So then I'm going to skip that one, I'm going to go up, and I'm going to go underneath that stitch, bring it across, and you see I've got this half of this, this stitch duplicated already. I'm going to go back into that point. Back into that point where I came out of. And then I'm going to just randomly choose. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, where am I going to go? Let's go up there. Making sure that you choose the right row where the wide part of the stitch is up. Okay. So this is the one I'm duplicating. I'm going to go underneath that one that's on top of it. Pull it across. And then come back down into that point. Then maybe I'm going to go down here. Okay. That one looks a little bit wider because it's stretch or taller because only because it's stretched more up at the top here. But it, it just gives it care. Uh, like it just looks great. I love it that way too. Okay. So this one ended up being underneath that one. So maybe that's going to give me some inspiration um, because I like how that landed. So then I'm going to I'm going to do rows. Of these. See, you get going and then your mind tell, <laughs> then your creati creativity comes out, okay? So I've got this one here, then I've got those two. I'm going to see if I can line this one up and go over to, let's see, there's one, two rows in between. I'm going to go over to here. Then I'm going to duplicate this stitch. I'm trying to line it up with that one and I see it's one stitch too low, so I'm going to take it out. Okay, and I'm going to go up one, up to here. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate that stitch. Go down, and then, so I've got one, one, and two in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to, see if I can follow that row. Finish off this stitch, then I'm going to come down into this one. Or is it this one? No, I think it's this one. Well, you do one, and if it if it's too low or too high, then you just uh, you just take it out like I did that last stitch. Okay, nope, that's perfect. Okay, okay, and so this one I have two stitches miss or in between, so I'm gonna go this one. I'm going to miss this. I get grab another point here. I'm going to not duplicate this one. I'm not gonna duplicate this one, but I'm gonna duplicate this one. So I'm gonna come up at the bot point of that one. Okay, so right. In here, at the point, the base of the stitch I'm going to duplicate, okay? Then I'm going to miss that stitch and go up to the next one. And then I'm going to come back into that point and come across to where I want to do my next, my next stitch, which is right there, okay? And then I'm going to, that's how I'm going to do this one. So I've got one, then two, then one, then two, and then I'm going to, you know, finish it off that way and, uh, and then be creative from there if I might just leave it like that or I might um do blue on the bottom here all of these other eggs I have multiple colors on this one I think I'm going to leave pink and blue because I'm really really liking that I think so far it's going to look great okay so um that's how I do my eggs so I um yeah I just hope that that inspired you a little bit and that you um go ahead and try it yourself and you know it'd be beautiful if you bought the big big eggs from um the plastic eggs and then you just figure out how many rows you need for that um, if you bought a really big one, you could use your, your 32 needle or your 40 needle and, and, uh, and then do a duplicate stitching pattern on that. And how beautiful would that be? Um, so there you go. There is my, um, tutorial on how to do a duplicate stitch, stitched egg, um, or a garter stitched egg, or you can just keep them plain and with the right side out and nothing on them, but they look so pretty when you, when you, um, have them done this way, I'm going to put some, some Easter grass in there and some lights and you'll see that at the beginning of, of the uh, video, of course. All right. So thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope that um, 
you learned another uh, skill and that you um you, that you enjoyed it and that you go go ahead and make a bunch of these. You know, this would be kid friendly too. Um, do this with your kids and have them have them create with with the uh, with the different colors on their eggs and make their eggs this way too. How how much fun would that be? Okay, so thanks again for joining me in this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up um, because that is how we know that, that YouTube promotes my videos and I appreciate you doing that so much. Um, so hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. And come on over and join me um, and a wonderful group of women in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. If you haven't done so already, um, we would love to have you join us over there um, for lots of inf inspiration and fun and uh, ideas. And yeah, so um, thanks again, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.